Winter. Mountainousness. It's very bad here. Puffy white snow falls all over. A number of carriages are trying to get through the cliffs. Robotniks in gray cloaks clear the snow. Looking out from the window of the carriage is a girl with ugly face, purple eyes, and hair of the same color. Through the Havelina, he looks straight ahead, as if he were in a bad mood. Fona props her head with her hand. We need to achieve a place of recognition before it gets dark. It is clear that this young lady is quite pleased. The maid sitting next to her hums loudly, Miss, be careful with your wound. The girl immediately removes her hand from the accusation. Tears appear in the maid's eyes. Vona is really worried about her lady. Gospodar, I will be with you. The wound has passed and is still burning. The lady smiles softly at the words of the servant. Everything is good. I want to go somewhere far away. The girl is cheerful. It's all over. Get some rest. The servant adds that people are bound to change their thoughts about Lady Kishner. The remaining words of the girl catch the lady. People. Why? The maid frowns. So, even if it weren't for the prince, Lady Kishner would never have been around again. I hated them. Possibly you can't say that, but it's true. The girl tells her lady about those who were in stitches. Last time when the gentle prince said that you have no charm. Lady Kishner laughed. The servant conveys the words of this pale and sweet-looking girl at first glance. If I don't have a lot of good people, then you don't care about anything here. She seems to have realized why so many people hate Lady Kishner. The girl will guess that she was even more overwhelmed when she sensed the words that flew out of the mouth of the beetle. The purple-haired ice snorts sensitively and calmly says, I understand. Maybe I just wanted to throw a cup at them or earn something like this. Those are empty words. Vaughn understands perfectly well that her hostility cannot be overcome. The lady is entrenched in the mistress. There is a cup of red water in front of her eyes. Then other items begin to appear. A table, cutlery, and of course, desserts, an incredibly delicious and expensive service. Among the desserts, the most delicious is the midnight pastry. A man in an officer's uniform is sitting at the table. He grabs the cup from his white mitten, getting ready to drink some. His body is quite tense. You should say to the girl who is sitting opposite him, be kind, let's break it up. The purple hair flattens his eyes and squeezes his wrist. The words of the man are being interpreted. The room is unacceptably quiet. The table is quiet, so you can almost hear the sleeping birds that are mooning because of the windows. The atmosphere is not very friendly. Wait a minute. The girl's companion, a young fair-haired man with green eyes, is a prince whom she met three months before the engagement. It's time to marvel at the ice. The girl glares at him with an obvious look. There you go. Bring the cup to the mouth. From the face of the lady, it is clear that she is no longer accepting of Rosmova. The prince doesn't want to be friends with her at all. Nogo already has a nickname. The girl is very similar to him. Vona burst into tears when she found out that the prince was with her. Nowadays, you won't even stream while drinking. The prince hastens to soothe her. I thought that Mrs. Buchanan would accept my curse. Blonde-haired woman sniffles. We're having a hard time alone. Vaughn looks at the lady with his green eyes. Are you so desperate to separate us? The violet-haired guy doesn't like this concert at all. She doesn't even think about when it will end. The prince's liking for Lady Kishner was no secret to the lady. She knows that the two of them spent an hour having fun behind her back. Rubinia was always in charge of the prince. One day the servants caught the lovebirds kissing on the balcony at one o'clock in the afternoon. All the guests were talking about this. The Snow Queen lost the spring season. The lady tried to drink tea and thought, Before I was already a good target for tiles. But after it became clear about the breakup of the parties, the discussion became much larger. The girl sits weary, closes her eyes, and then unimportantly turns to the prince. Do you want to admit your guilt? Possibly I would like to immediately awaken someone's conscience. Toy smiles nervously. Well, sure. But this does not mean that the royal family does not want to waste the grace of the Bukion on homeland, so don't get it wrong. The girl clutches the cup in her hands. If it weren't for nothing, the lady would have hit the princes long ago. This abomination wants to open the bonds without political heritage. There is no such thing as insolence. But the girl is not going to show her thoughts about the prince. Natomist, you will be able to get away with the help. Eunuch diakuye yi. That girl hasn't finished yet. Vaughn's eyes sound. I will effectively refuse full compensation from the insurance company for the stress I have endured. I think you'll understand. The guy has nothing against him. Vin smiles sweetly. Rubinia is still in the grip of the decision of the lady. Blonde hair says, That's great, Miss Kyria. You will take away everything you please. Rubinia sits down to her boyfriend's shoulder and adds with a playful smile, I'm so glad you accepted it. Kyria Movchki watches over her big girl.
Alrubinia is not so simple anymore. Ikiria will guess about it. Her head appears to have an upcoming forecast. Ladies' room. Only the heavy dishes on the table will tell you about the recent tea. From the corner of the room one senses disappointment and a sense of weariness. Say Kiria. The girl lies on her bed. The lady tries to understand how she got to this point. The prince was afraid to take responsibility for breaking the bonds. Now it's time to get excited about it. The maid looks into the room. Miss, are you okay? The girl burrows into the pillow so that the servant does not waste her money and disappointment in the world. So, Ale maid servant Bashit, Shesar Bresha Yi. The girl feeds Kiria. Can I speed up the spells and wipe their eyes? Kiria throws the cotton pillow to the side. Everything is fine. Can you make me some tea? I have a headache. The maid comes to life. I'm going to earn money right away, before you as a professional serving brewed tea. There's no way to run to the tea table. The girl is afraid to do everything she can because she doesn't want to bother Kiria. After a few minutes, everything is ready. The pleasant smell of tea spreads through the room. Kiria grins. The girl appreciates that the servant talks about her like that. But from the memory of the lady, we cannot remember one image. Rubinia Kishner. This is a sweet and smiling girl, a favorite of the prince himself. Who is it? Kiria wonders. I don't know anything about her, except for the fact that she is from a young aristocratic homeland in the outskirts. She's been the witch before me. Kiria will come up with one of these attacks. Ball rich nobles as before they are discussing. So empty balls are an invisible part of the skin's appearance. Kiria goes up to the two ladies to talk to them. I can already hear the viguk. Oh God! The girl turns her head to the side to marvel at the ruler's voice. Look at Rubina in front of you. Blonde-haired, dressed in rich red cloth, lazily fanning herself with willow. Lady Buchan, I do not love your companion. Who did you come for? Leda coldly admits that her father is accompanying her. The girl was annoyed by Rubina's nourishment. There's a constant smell in your nose that's out of your control. This is really insensitive. That Rubinia, it seems, is not well enough aware of the rules of decent behavior. Vona grins. I'll ask you again, the crown prince said. Do you want to sing with me? Rubinia glances at Kyria's face and adds, I couldn't recognize you. Blonde hair wants to annoy Kyria to take her away. Lady Buchan's friend would like to help the purple-haired one. Lady Cassiu, were we going to talk about something that you might as well sing? Rubinia feeds, and it is not possible to eat it before discussion. Kyria's friend looks straight at the blonde with a bestial look. We don't accept anyone at a glance. Rubinia frowns. The tone in which one speaks to her is not appropriate for a girl. But the blonde girl knows the vile mood. Vaughn, laughing, said that the crown prince called her to the gazebo. So off you go. The girl turns her back to the young lady and goes straight to the exit from the hall, humming a simple melody. Kyria's friend is overwhelmed by Rubinia's behavior. She's gone crazy. How dare you steal someone else's betrothed? The girl with the green cloth still doesn't understand anything. Kyria tries to calm down her nervous friend. Laran, they can kill you. All the girls are already at it. Well, hey, what's wrong with me? The ice near the green cloth snorts quietly. Lauren doesn't even think about stammering. Who does she respect herself for? Lady Kessiu is guilty of bullying you. Kyria can hardly laugh at this word. It's nice that Lauren protects her like that. The girl expresses her suspicions about the ball. She immediately checks while the tea is still cold. Sing, Lauren will dance with joy when they learn about the rupture of the Zaruchans. And because of Mary, the girl is indifferent. The servant yells at the lady, Do you want to write a sheet? Kyria immediately perks up. Exactly. Let's take it away since the bonds have already been broken. The maid gives the girl a pen and paper. Kyria says that they need to be respectful. You can hear some kind of booming sound. The Nalyakin servant turns her head towards the door. A tall, gray-haired man in a yellow-blue suit rushes into the room. Wen looks even angry. Kiri, Kiri Bukhan, please come to me. This man is the young lady's father. The girl doesn't dare to disobey him, and then he'll be worth a damn father. Kyria tries to tell him what has happened, but the man won't let her say a word. He is tired of taking aim at his daughter. The girl opens her eyes wide. It looks like my dad is no longer in control of himself. At the next second, the man's hand, with a characteristic sound, falls on the young lady's cheek. The girl clenches her teeth in pain rather than cry. For goodness sake, she knew that this would be the case. Kyria grins and, touching the victim's cheek, says, Father, I admit that the agreed payment of compensation was not very successful. The man clenches his teeth with fury and feeds his daughter with another blow. Kiria is making friends. The maid vibrates loudly. Miss! A girl cannot be bothered by a man's aggression. Fawn is going to help her lady. 
Ale Kiria doesn't want to involve another servant. The young lady puts her hand forward. Don't be respectful. Kiria rages at her father. Those two girls hit me, how do you compensate? The man feeds his daughter, who dared to become a crown prince. The girl says, this never happened. A second later, she adds, except without giving me a blunder. The man clenches his hand into a fist and then swings at Kiria. You, how are you talking to me? Until the man hits the girl. However, this fist is still visible in the world, being ahead of me. What kind of kid did you break the bonds? The girl's father would have thought that she would have been a little like Lady Kesu. The crown prince would not have praised the decision. The girl clenches her hands into fists. Do you really think so? People ignore Kiria's nutrition. Do you want to understand what kind of capacity there is? You wasted your chance to become queen. Kiria grins loudly and encourages her father to marry the prince himself. The servant senses that he will soon become greedy, and he will turn to the side so as not to hurt anyone. She understands that a man cannot take away his daughter's words just like that. But the young lady is still not going to say, I have obeyed you all my life. This is true. Father steadily covered them with all sorts of goiters. You're mushing, you're mowing. Kiria's eyes sound when guessing about those hours. Until what time? I was able to wipe myself off. They stood before me like a child. They said that they had taken away my chosen one. The girl endured the whispering and images of people for the sake of her father. It's even worse if you defended them and broke the bonds with the happy crown prince. But Father Kiri does not accept calling his daughter. You allowed him to be taken away. The girl doesn't stream and screams, Ha! How good are you, Daddy? Kiria tells people about those who separated from her mother. Aloha we won't forget, because everything was so miraculous with him. The man gets even angrier. The servant runs to Kiria. There she stands between the young lady and the disconnected man. It's not possible, my sir, Kiria shouts. And Mari, don't bother. It's already too late. The man hums. What kid? The girl explains. You can't. And Marie doesn't want you to beat Miss Billy. It's not my fault. The servants are really scared to say these words, lest they realize that they might kidnap their lady. Father Kiri grabs Inmari by the hair. How dare this servant? Kiria tries to say to the man, Father, who was I afraid of? What should Inmari rub under her hot hand? The man is furious with his daughter. You have tried the term, Kiri Buchan. Stay here until I allow you to come in. The girl was walking around with a bag and marveling at her dad in her eyes. The man decides to let the poor servant go and walk out of the room. You're as miserable as your mother, Kiri. You can feel in Mari's sobbing. The girl's father said to his daughter goodbye. Think on what money you lived on all this time. The doors are being repaired. Kiria tries to cash out such an unfortunate sum, and she's about to leave for a little while. Kiria raises her eyebrows and says coldly to herself, All the same, I haven't experienced anything else. Well, Dad, you will call me again. The storm continues to be fierce outside. The wind pulls the old dry tree to the ground. Lady puts her hand on her white mitten to the cold window of the carriage. She soon has the image of a disenchanted dad. Kiri Bukan, you're in the wrong word. The girl is quick to kick this man out of her head. Now you will be found in the middle of the snowy mountains, far from anywhere. Kiria grins. The winter is so beautiful. The girl is pleased with the opportunity to have mercy on the Garni of the region. The lady lowers her head and thinks to say, as if it weren't there. Everything is better. In the capital, they would constantly bore me with food about the breakup of Zeruchans. The girl suspects that the crown prince of Rubinia will make friends within hours of his day. Then they decide to give her peace. There won't be any bad calls or tiles. Until then, Rubinia is the crown prince of a miracle couple. It stinks to put one on one. Kyria is cunningly making friends. The servant is amazed by the behavior of her master. Kyria means that the stench needs to last for a long time. And Marie immediately throws a warm blanket over the girl's shoulders near the cage. My lady, are you cold? Kiria is a servant. One can feel the dullness. The snow crunches under the boots of the man who is approaching the carriage. Kiria is straining. Who is going to make a covenant with her? Outside the doors of the carriage stood two men, wrapped in a mantle. The youngest of them, a short-eyed, dark-haired young man denouncing the ugly rice, goes wild to Kiria. The girl says, What happened, Vanya? Eunuch, it seems that it is not safe to continue on the roads in such weather. It is necessary to know the place where it would be possible to skip the seal. The girl looks around the place. In the middle of the mountain forest? Vona says, Still, we were going to lose goods from the village no matter how we passed by. My intuition didn't make me happy. Fan says that it's a shame but you don't mean anything. 
the girl shows respect for the man who stands behind the Lord, a man of the Middle Ages in a beige cloak. It is very difficult to shake, and its appearance is an unhealthy red color. The man looks like he will soon die from the cold. Kiria guesses that it is his responsibility to escort the crew. Lord Wang goes crazy. If only you had listened to Lady Buchan. She desperately tries to say in a tremulous voice, I, I, the Lord feeds whatever the man wants, and you decide to go out to someone. What can I do? Vin hesitates because he doesn't know what to let him say further. And Mari, Vantakiria looks straight at the man. That one seemed unspeakably. Hey, there's nothing on the map, but nearby there's a small town called Gula. Kiria repeats in a loud voice, Gula? Van frowns. Are you in your right mind? Take the lady to a place that isn't on the map? The Lord draws his sword. The creepy man says that if you close the place, it's safe there. Vin bows to the Lord. I really don't want to die. I pray you have mercy on me. Kiria notes that the stranger's hands were blackened in the same way as he had denounced him. This one is severely hypothermic. The girl means thoughts. If you don't kill anything, you'll die. Until then, the storm will get worse. Kiria says, Good, let's go to Gully. Lord Wang tries to reread. My lady, that girl won't let me live. If we leave here, we'll freeze to death. Gilki Yalin is falling asleep with snow. Kiria turns to the servant. A place that doesn't appear on the map? Isn't it fun in Marie? The maid from the burials said that she was buried. The hour is passing. The carriage drives up to the statue of a woman with a blank in her arms. The direction of thought means that this road leads to a dead end. The girls seem to have lost their way, and Marie looks at the window. What is the place? The human guide approaches the stone woman and places his hand on her shoulder. Kiria doesn't understand. It's impossible to work. A gate appears in front of the crew. It's very similar to the place where you've been visiting. And Marie hums happily. Wah, I bought you, mist. Kiria thinks... What kind of magic can take over the whole place? Various booths begin to appear in the vacant lot. Kiria is even more amazed. How? The place is not shown on the map, right? The gates are opening. The carriage drives to the place. The wooden wheels screech loudly. The crew rushes past the statue of a woman with babies in her arms. Vaughn begins to chatter. It looks like there is a place again from outside eyes. Kiria and Anne-Marie search among the trees for a young deer, trying to find a blade of grass under a thick ball of snow. He sniffs, but unfortunately, the winter did not deprive him of life. The deer hears the sound of snow clicking. The animal raises its head and shakes the horses, people, and carriage. The deer begins to run towards the forest, approaching the guests of the place. Tim is in another place for an hour. Crystal clear lake, Nim Pliv Great Wooden Chaven. The water hits you lightly. There is a feeling of hostility that is trying to calm the ship. Rubinia sits next to her. The girl is dressed in yellow cloth and the same color of droplets, embellished with red stitching. The lady's hair was simply combed or combed. Sitting opposite Reuben is the crown prince. The girl immediately notes the wonder in the distance. She puts it up to her breasts and says, What? What was it? The water has a place to sparkle. The crown prince says, What are you talking about, Ruby? The girl smiles sweetly. I guess I got it. The lake is so garna. The crown prince tries to compliment his brother. This lake is respected by the kings of the kingdom, but it can't compare with your beauty. Rubinia is fumbling around. The girl feeds when she speaks about her promises. The crown prince takes the hands of his Kohanoi from his own. I must immediately be relinquished from my blessed majesty. The lad raises Rubinia's tendentious hand to his lips. It's a lie that his majesty will not allow permission to our guarantors. The prince squeals a little. I hope you don't want to show your dissatisfaction to the prince. The girl grins. I'm so happy. My heart goes out to you only. A dozen snowflakes fall on the valley of the prince and the young lady. The boy raises his head. Snow? Otherwise the sky itself will bless us. Rubinia gets along with the Kohanim. Let's turn to Kyria. A large booth made of concrete and dark wood. Through the small windows there is a merciless notice that is not about to be sensed. This means that the doors belong to the same room. To Kyria. The lady just came out of the bath. After the hot shower I feel truly alive. It's not so bad here. The girl turns her gaze to the window. Zaviryuka is rare here. Kiria flattens her eyes wide. The edges of this small, hidden place are quite fitting. Apparently the girl has begun to burn, and does not understand why such a miraculous mystery has been created. It's really nice and clean here. And the Budinki, the Kazka, began to burn. The Great Ones are quiet. The girl harbors in Mari's thought about Gula. The maidservant marvels at the window. Vona is in no hurry to confirm her lady. 
It's amazing, she doesn't look like her at all. The lady is once again going wild to Anmari. Those are Movchanya, Kiria feeds. What's going on there? It's absolutely incredible that the maid's concern was something out of the ordinary for her. And Marie decides to turn to accusations to her lady. From her glaring eyes, Kiria understands that her deception was despicable. The maid quietly says, My lady, Kiria feeds what has happened. And Mari crosses her hands on her chest. Miss, and Mari, I'm afraid. It's close, it's scary. It's more scary to entrust us, my lady. And Mari Nalyakana, Kiria is shocked. Anne, at Sensi, what are you afraid of? The maid says that something greedy is slumbering here and looking out for misfortune. And Marie knows, the girl says. Let me tell you that the lady needs to leave this place urgently. Kiria doesn't even understand that it's happening. Vaughn has never told in Mari such a loud voice. Possibly it's just stress from the long journey. Lady tries to calm the servant. And don't boast, I'll go as soon as the storm is over. A few seconds later, the girl says that she is preparing tea for the lady and her lover. Kiria is shocked by such a drastic change in Anne-Marie's mood. This is not the case here. The servant enters the next room and blinks white the window. Without turning to any further accusations, you should say, and Mari will seize you, my lady. The girl walks up to the door and clenches her hand into a fist. I will definitely kidnap you. And Marie drops by to Kiria's room and says to boil a little water now. Kiria looks at the servant, or rather at the place where she stood a few seconds ago. For the love of all that is holy, thoughts of telling the lady. What is going on here? The girl turns her gaze to the window. What did it make so loud? It is still a mystery for Kiria. Perhaps she will figure it out very soon. Possibly no. Who knows? The lady can't take her eyes off the window. What's there? Who knows what this place of worship has to offer? Why is the brave Anne Marie so afraid? Kyria tries to concentrate in order to mark the emergency at the window. Just don't say anything out of the ordinary. Just booths. On the other hand, the maid wouldn't behave like that without a reason. The girl comes closer to the window and touches the glass with her hands. And again, she doesn't notice anything like that. Just a small area. The kingdom has hundreds of them but no more. Kyria said in an angry tone, I'm only blowing snow. And we sunbathed, so that it wouldn't be there. And now the unprepared weather was getting worse. Otse is really a reason to be afraid. I'll wrap them the girl will come up with something. The guides hastened to reach Gothel, the man whom Lord Van Eyst did not strategize, shouting, Here! Gothel is here! Let's go fast! The girl turns her back to the window and crosses her hands on her chest. I thought thanks to the weather I didn't show respect to him. What is there there? Kyria opens the door. They said that they will be there first if you need it. I am guilty of everything. You can't just sit there. The girl leaves the room. From the street there is a booming sound, similar to a vibrator. At the window of the hotel there is a brightness, one might say, blindingly, lightly. Black darkness appears on the street. There you see, rushing past the budinki and hovering over the face of one of them. Mitt, gloom comes upon the silhouette of a man. He is quite tall and stringy, with a heavy cloak. There is a reed in New Dovg's hand. It's impossible to look at the rice of your exposure. Weaving from the dark, Kyria sticks her hand into the wooden railing. There she already reached the first one on top. The girl immediately freezes in place. I can hear Rosmov. Are you in God's name? In the first version there are two people, the guide and most likely the ruler of Gothel. The conductor says truthfully, Why should I work? Wait, how much snow is there? The stench is unrecognizable. Elvlasnik Gothel is still dissatisfied. It is important that bringing strangers to the place is hopeless. Still, don't fry it. Lots of people could be harmed. The conductor said earnestly, Are you saying that we had to freeze to death there? Vlasnik clasps his hands on his chest. I'm going to screw up. But the man can't come to an agreement. Kyria interrupts him as the rest of the gatherings continue. Why bother? The girl is determined to find out what is going on here. The men immediately turn their heads to look at the young lady. The conductor tries to express himself, Oh, my lady, Ale Kiria is not so simple. What should I say? The conductor makes one more attempt to get out of it. Oh, ha ha, nothing, no need. Vlasnik Gothel should stop talking, but it's clear that there's no tension. Kiria frowns. Do you dare deceive the daughter of the Bukhan family? What does this place like? What do you want? I want to know about it. I know, I believe. The conductor lowers his head. I can't say, Kiria says. If you don't tell me, I'll tell my father about it. Can you guess what will happen to you? The man seems to be willing to do it for the good of Kyria herself. The girl waves her shawl. I don't want to lose my place in doubt. I want to know what you are afraid of, so be careful. The guide in no way confirms this. 
If you say so, let's face it, we ourselves don't know for sure. Vlasnik caresses the conductor on the shoulder. Hey, the conductor adds, we know it's an apocalypse. Kyria repeats, apocalypse? The girl is somewhat shocked by the man's testimony. Vaughn puts her hand forward and closes her eyes. Catch that snout. The young lady tries to analyze everything she sensed and gather her thoughts. The girl turns her gaze to the window. Incredibly, do you really believe in something similar? You are boasting without a drive. The Kyrias and Balachki are filled with childish guesses. What kind of apocalypse is this? It must sound funny. However, Vlasnik Gothelia doesn't think so. It's dissatisfied, but it's tempting to say, Be kind. Choose your expressions. Kyria nourishes and is not a threat. She doesn't want to raise her eyebrows. It's all right. It would be better for you to sit quietly and not make yourself or others feel uneasy. The girl seems to be Vlasnikov's god, who spared you. As if another representative of the nobility had stumbled upon this place, he would have been sadly wasted. Vlasnik tries to recover. The apocalypse is not so simple. What do I want to say? The girl mumbles. Good, good. If you talk about the Day of Judgment, then I'll hit you. Kyria seems like every child in the country read these stories. Vlasnik glared at the young lady with an angry look. The next guide bursts between him and Kyria. I guess he chooses a girl. The man who is already trembling in fear says, My wife in whose place one should be wary of strangers. The girl coldly points out, It's all the same to me. I'll leave this unpleasant place as soon as the storm ends. This is the only reason why I am here. Vlasnik says to Gothel, The war will never end. The girl is shocked. What? This place is more and more amazing, just like its people. Ladies' hotel room. Someone is knocking at the old wooden door. After a while, and Marie rushes into the room. Kyria immediately turns her head to the servant's side and freezes in place. The girl's hair is disheveled, her cheeks are red and her eyes, and Marie's eyes are empty. Kyria screams, and Marie! But the girl doesn't prove anything. Vaughn falls for the forgery. An hour is passing, and Marie will flatten her eyes. First of all, what is there to look at? A giant chandelier in the middle century style. The maid is getting drunk no matter what. Kyria, who is sitting on her bed, Anne-Marie immediately interrupts her. For the love of all that is holy, how did you cope in such cold? You said you're going to make tea. And Marie squeezes the carpet with her thin fingers and confesses, I went to check it. My lady, it looks like a girl is talking about the apocalypse. Apparently the smallest mystery about the target is Anne-Marie. Their hands begin to tremble. The maid instructs Kyria. If I'm going to speak to you, don't tell me. Kyria, in a tone like a lighthouse, repeats, What? And Mari continues, Don't fill your window with servitude and be quiet, don't go out. Kyria understands that and Marie should not spoil, but speak entirely seriously. The young lady tells the girls that they won't go out anywhere, so that things don't get bad. And Marie sits down, relieved, and closes her eyes. The maid is almost wearing her bindings. Vona saved everything she could to provide for her beloved lady. Kyria looks at the two pretty candles on the pedestal and wonders at the words of the servant. As in Marie noticed something was wrong. That's a hundred hundred thousand connected with magic. The girl walks up to the table in front of the window and sits down on the table. Those thoughts mean that everything is even more wonderful. What really happened to the city? At first glance, there is nothing unexpected here. However, Syria does not leave the country because Gula has died out. During the entire hour of hanging around here, the thirsty people didn't seem to mind. The girl looks at the frozen window of the booth opposite. If there were people here, the stench would be cleared away from the snow and they would like to get rid of the ice. It's not safe. Hell is definitely alive here before. The place doesn't look hopelessly abandoned. The light-hearted, the angry ones. You can hear the crunch of the snow. So no matter what. Hell is not human. On the street, not far from the hotel, a black couple appears. Kyria feeds herself. What can she do? Possibly these are the ones that people are so afraid of. Kamara begins to transform herself. Here you can see wonderful and contented vocal sounds. Kyria doesn't glance at her. What? 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 A gloom comes upon the appearance of a man's silhouette. Alay, to replace this shadow that we were warned about today, you might want to look at the eyes. The stench burns with a blue, unkind fire. Kyria abruptly removes her hand from the window and stops in place. She doesn't understand what's behind the window. The young lady had never thought of such a thing. I mean, ye. Kyria wants to come in, but, but I can't. The girl opens her eyes wide. Vaughn tries to twist her legs, but she can't help it, as if the magic had bitten her ruins. The girl, who is shaking in fear, thinking, saying, Maybe that's it. The ones everyone is so afraid of. Nashati Kyria is going to destroy the place. 
but fear does not let the girl go. Vaughn clearly observed a wondrous truth behind the scenes. I look like a man. And most of all, Kiria remembered their soothing cold blue eyes that looked straight into the girl's soul. The essence of Tremala in the hand is similar to a reed. Finally, this is the subject. Possibly there you go, or the vicarist reed should be driven in. This is the best option. Kiria shudders at this thought. The girl raises her hand to her chest and thinks, this is wonderful. In the middle of the night at such a turn, what could have happened? Kiria looks at her window with fear and a smile. Look, what is the cost of the hotel? Because the weather is so bad, she's lightly dressed, and it doesn't look like it was cold. Once again, the blue eyes look directly at Kiria. Once upon a time, he is not angry, but rather serious and forgiving. However, it's still terrible. Luckily for the girl, she suddenly starts to admire her. Silences to rush forward. Snow crunches under your feet. The villages, standing still, break into the ice. Mitt, the truth is the wind is literally breaking up, depriving itself of a thick and important fog. Kiria grabs the tea table. It's gone. The girl grabs her heart. Vona begins to choke at the grief she has experienced. What? What happened? Kiria cannot forget the look of this reality. Look at the way they bark to the drizhaks. The girl falls down and grabs her head. What? Take my child. Kiria turns her gaze to the window. The moment our eyes became focused, I stopped breathing. Let Kira get a little bit out of what has happened. The girl is quite let down. The old wood makes it creaky under the car. There is light outside. Kiria glances at the street. As soon as it was cleared up, there was no one there at the moment. Alas, it was and unknown. Natural stubbornness does not give the girl peace of mind. The hour is passing. The sun touches with its golden warm changes the sweet green dewdrop on the windowsill of the young lady's room. This is a very aesthetic picture. Kiria, having recently fallen asleep, flattens her eyes. This elementary action is very important to her. The girl says quietly, Anne, I need, bring some water. But the servant does not respond to the master's voice. Kiria sits down and looks around the room. It's wonderful that Ale and Mari is nowhere to be found. Looks like she's gone somewhere. Kiria completely sits down and tries to refuel herself, a little angry at Anne Maria. Where did she go? I felt bad for myself since the moment I came here. This is due to disrupted sleep patterns. But the girl can't do anything with this. She can't sleep here. The lady goes to the tea table and pours herself a cup of her beloved drink. Kiria brings the cup to her mouth and sighs. Hey, despite all the troubles, I fell asleep so easily today. Didko knows what's in this place. The girl is trying to make a cup of tea so that the rest will be drunk. Kira feeds herself, where Anne Marie went after all. Lady Navita had the opportunity to prepare the tea herself. Kiria approaches the gathering place, planning to go downstairs and look for Anne Marie. The girl asks where she could have gone. Perhaps she went on reconnaissance again while I was sleeping. Raptum Kiria grabs her head. It hurts. Vona is floating until they come down. Until then, the lady told Anne Maria not to go anywhere. I want to knock on the door. Kiria puts the empty cup on the saucer and says, Who's there? The voice behind the door calmly says, Milady Tsevan. Kiria grins. Come in. Vona is glad that the Lord has arrived. The doors open. It's possible to stand on the fence, Van. True, he is not alone. Belia new conductor. The man looks quite guilty. I remember not even receiving the meeting with the lady yesterday. The girl is still not in control. The situation seems familiar. The conductor bows to the lady. I'll ask again. Kiria is already saying, Are you asking again? For what? The man is careful to say that it is not safe to navigate through the heavy snow. She feeds Kiria, so she couldn't wait another day. The girl is not going to say so easily. Acceptable, I don't want to. Can you solve this problem? The guy doesn't have anything to say. The girl puts her hand to her chest. In order to correct your mercy, you must please my stubbornness. The guide says that he doesn't know anything. Kiria feeds and knows about the origin of the language. She's trying to beat up the girl. But I don't want to hear. Be honest. It feeds those that I wanted to know yesterday. What is this place like and why are there no people here? The man's eyes dart back and forth. There's no way to go anywhere. As a matter of fact, you don't want to give food to the lady. The man falls to his knees and yells at the girl. Please wait for a few more days. The loudness of the man's voice is too great. Kiria's head begins to hurt again. The girl sits up in disarray. The guide says that everything will be fine after this. Kiria is ready to do everything so that this abomination does not kill her. Vaughn waves her hand wildly. Forget it. Just go. The conductor and Lord Wang leave the room. Kiria lies down on her face. I love this pose as a child. 
The girl says that she's really bored, especially without and Marie. I wish I could turn around. The lady picks up a small black book. She already read it in advance here. The girl is pleased with herself for taking so few books. Who knows what it would be like to be stuck here for a few days. Kyria marvels at the massive door. So, are there books in the hotel? I'm so bored that I've already forgotten a lot of the windows on every street I used to have. The girl leaves the room. You plan to take a few walks and see the hotel. Kyria looks into the first room. It's not good, of course, to come here. There are a lot of children's toys in the room. Horse-drawn horse, pull-up, blocks. The walls are filled with little policemen with photographs. And there are also books here. Kyria's gaze falls on the plump, plush dog, which lies calmly next to the Velotensky bear. Girl means that the room is like a child. The lady looks at the police with the photographs. Does the hotel have children? One of them shows a man hugging his squad and his little son. Kyria says to herself, Why? Volodar to the hotel? And people entrust him with Yosimya. This is the first thing that the girls think about. Perhaps this is the room where the boys are in the photo. Kyria carefully closes the doors behind her and walks deeper into the room to the book police. The girl takes out one book. She's amazed that you'll find something good with her. The book is small and not very tall. Kyria looks at the black lining for a few seconds, most likely tells the girl to light up this book. Lady agrees. On the first page, there is a black man with a scepter in his hands. It's fateful that the apocalypse has buried the earth. The world has a great charmer. The girl understands what is the legend about the sleeping of the kingdom. Kyria sulks. It's been so long since I read children's fairy tales. The girl's voice raps. What have you forgotten here? Nalyakana Kyria turns her head to her side and shakes her hair at Gothel. Don't give her an angry look. In principle, why? The girl entered someone else's room without permission. Kyria realizes her guilt. You see, you left without permission. Vlasnik move. The girl dares to ask, Will you beat me up? An unfortunate situation has arisen. The man looks at the book in Kyria's hands. No, hello. The girl wonders why the original child Cossack was so tickled. It's not as simple as it sounds. Just in case, Kyria plans to put the book on the spot. The man clenches his hands into fists. It's impossible to sleep on the apocalypse on this earth. It's impossible to wake him up. This is the place to come. The girl again takes the same book into her hands and lights it up. Vaughn quickly reads a few rows and feeds the ruler. This land is called Gala. A second, another food. It's good to sleep in this place for the apocalypse. The man dejectedly says, I don't know for sure we grew up on this story. Vlasnik adds that the story about the sleeper at the place of the apocalypse has been circulating since my grandfather's time, but not before. Kyria says, Isn't Kiba just a fairy tale? It's enough to prove to many that the apocalypse is nothing more than a myth. The man smiles sadly, Ha, huh, we live here. But no one knows what it is. This place was created for a new one. The man looks at the photo, and his father holds his smiling son in his arms. We will continue the honor of our ancestors. The apocalypse will sleep on these lands. You can't wake him up. You can't go out on the streets. The girl feeds, and what will happen if you want to break these rules? Vlasnik says, We don't know. People just know. Kyria now glances at the photograph of the man and the boy. Has the stench gone away? The girl sounds her eyes. Her head is a complete mess. Vaughn still hasn't realized what's happening. Kyria turns towards the door. I'll go back to my room. Vlasnik to say what to do. This is similar to attentiveness. Or maybe he's afraid that Kyria will be useful again. Evening girl's room. The young lady's head is filled with memories for the remaining ten days. A screeching conductor. A frowning ruler to Gothel. And Marie is shocked. And the firebrand is the piercing gaze of blue eyes. Perhaps I'll repeat it myself. It's like bringing fear to the whole place and people being afraid. These words cannot be ignored. Kyria thinks about the book she read today in someone else's room. I thought it was a myth about the people of the land. And what about the apocalypse? You can't tell the truth. You can hear a vocal sound. The lady shudders. Who is it? Van. Vaughn wonders what the Lord wants from those close to her, for example, and Marie. If a girl's promiscuity turns out to be wicked, she understands that the sound is coming from the street. The lady turns her gaze to the window and almost jumps with excitement. Incredible! There's a black cloud that will turn into a human again. The girl puts her hand to the window. It's here. Kyria understands that the wound beyond her could not be seen. The girl pokes her hands at the window, intending to subdue him. Alay, she is not even convinced of the correctness of her actions. Raptum Kyria will guess the guarding of people. The stench told her that in the rainy season, it was impossible to close the window. 
Kyria left the window. The girl trembles in fear. The present days are not like a fairy tale. Everything is very serious, and Kyria understands this. The lady marks the girl in the white apron at the window. Look, Kyria can guess who. The ice broadly flattens the eyes due to swelling. The girl on the street is no one else but a servant. There you stand, straightening your arms. There is a feeling of hostility that the maid is trying to close herself, and Marie feels the crunch of snow. The girl turns around sharply. Look at the black truth. She looks quite scary and ominous and is on the attack. Elian Mari is not so loud. The servant shouts to the truth. Don't come closer, don't think about it, and Mari will spend everything to steal his lady. The green leaf that the maid gently squeezed from her hand is spinning. The essence of Michu freezes him, allowing Anmari to realize that she is no longer lying about anything. The girl begins to step back. Now she really doesn't know what to do. The tide is approaching the girl's day. Kyria shouts, No, no, no need, and Mari go to the run. The snow crunches under the black important shoes. The girl shouts, Ladies. Vaughn thinks that she should work now. How to steal Kyria. Now and then the girl respectfully watches over the activities of the servant. Looks like it's not safe. Kyria is already praising and Marie, but she is still not showing any respect. Lady clenches her hand into a fist. How are you treating me? How to tell Anmari the blackness is dull. Perhaps she was inspired to re-examine Anmari. Oh no. Vaughn is not going to deprive the girl. He pulls his cane from his belt and places it forward. Hugely wound Anmari. The girl flies back. Vaughn understands that now she definitely won't be allowed in. And they will tell no one at once. There's not a soul on the street. The servant's body trembles in fear. No, Kyria's cry can be heard, but the truth does not hear it. Vaughn is going to be the head of the servant of another strike. This is already fatal. Kira opens her eyes wide in recognition of her fear. The girls can't just stand there and marvel at how their servant is being killed. The ice is in charge of the windows if unsafe. In this manner, the girl wants to show respect for the truth. The maid turns her head towards Gothel. No, miss... She doesn't want the lady to expose her own insecurity through her. This, obviously, is very destructive but not reasonable, that Kyria is not going to attack. Vaughn stands in a fighting pose, preparing to fight the monster. Snow is falling near the window. The girl is shivering in the cold. The rock has a marvelous sparkle. The girl understands that she can't breathe again. This was already the case last night if that essence had not left her. The silhouette of a man appears in the room. Kyria tries to work backwards. The girl looks around the scene, trying to understand what she has to do. Attack, run, or simply not collapse. Hell, it seems the man is not going to attack. The blackness leaves his body. Now you can look at the face of this mysterious stranger. A thin nose, unheard of hair. Finn flies with Kyria. Cold drink flows down the girl's face. She looks into the man's eyes. Blue, deep, and cold eyes. The girl was watching them last night. Our man has a black medallion. An unknown person is talking about the depravity of Kyria, Hey. The girl squeezes her cloth six. This shows that I am guilty of reporting. The lady says quietly, I'm flying. I believe that it is better not to feel people, no matter who they are. You need to behave carefully and respectfully. The stranger grins. Are you an aristocrat? A girl should curtsy as it befits people of her status. I am Kyria, sir, daughter of Earl Buchan. The man tilts his head to the side. The lady's words tutted, Count Buchan. As far as I know, Buchan is a duke, not an earl. It's quite pleasant to say. The girl opens her eyes wide. Why does this wonderful man call his father a duke? All this calls for plenty of food, as yet no one knows. The lady is afraid to say that King Balbri Orovan Bridge has changed the status of her homeland. Who is it? Kyria feeds herself. Why talk about those that happened so long ago? The stranger squeezes the handle of his burning cane. How is it? The girl continues to feed herself. He's an aristocrat. Didn't you know about our adventure? A man asks a girl to sit down. I don't like to look down. Kyria immediately lowers herself onto the stilt. The stranger takes the seat opposite her. He's angry. Bakta, I'm so sick that the forest creature is trying to grab me. The girl stares at the stranger with annoyance. A forest creature? Should we talk about Anmari? The lady says, I understand. I'll ask you again, how can you help in Marie? It's easy to catch a cold in this weather. I wouldn't want her to get sick. The man means that Kyria's manners are stronger no matter what. The girl frowns. Please. The stranger throws himself onto the back of the chair. Vin clicks his fingers. There is a sound similar to cotton. Lady turns her head to the side, trying to realize that she herself killed the man. But don't say anything. About those that have happened, one can hear the rattle of old wooden gatherings. It is unknown to say that Anmari was transferred from the street to the first one above. Vin feeds Kyria. 
How can we continue our conversation? The girl seems shocked. What do you want to talk to me about? This man is amazed more and more. Kyria turns her gaze to the window. It's still fiercely turbulent on the street. The unknown person wonders who will rule now. His Majesty Queen Ginger, says the lady. The man puts forward the food. How about a generation? Vin begins tapping his fingers on the table in the cleared air. Kyria thinks what you need. He is more human-like than ever. Ale Kyria is not going to ask the person about this at once. It seems that we will now rule for eighteen generations. The stranger says, How boring. The young lady's gaze suddenly becomes frowning. It seems that she was an ignorant person before the royal family and aristocracy. The stranger continues to knock on the table out of boredom. These are the same sounds in the room. Kyria and the little man kiss each other with their glances. The girl clenches her hands into fists. I'm frozen to the wrists. Once upon a time a stranger breaks the inaudible silence. How did you get drunk at what place? Kyria glances at the window. I walked through the driveway and stopped at the end. Our crew stopped at the Snow Shepherd. Prodovzhuvati Shliak was simply not safe. Do you feel like it? The man is already feeding. Kyria lowers her head down and repeats. What do you want now? She doesn't understand what strangers need from her. He would raise his hand to the collection, and it seemed that the place was under the spell of Balbri, one of the most powerful shaklans of these days, who was stealing humanity. Kyria raises her eyebrows. The stranger continues, If only you could remove this extremely powerful magic bukan. Mushu Viznati, what is the enemy? The girl opens her eyes wide in shock. What? Vaughn did not understand the curse. Kiri really didn't think about it. What is this idiot talking about? The man begins to play with his chopped cane. This curse fell on me and you ruined my dream. It's impossible to understand his intonation for the sake of it. Kiria said in a tremulous voice out of fear. We can't do this. I didn't do anything and didn't even think about the curse. This is a pardon. That's all. The man lowers his head and says firmly, No. Tse bulivi buchan. The stranger looks directly at Kiria. A girl's thoughts mean that her eyes cannot be with a person. The stench of the sky is dripping through. Kiria is suffering from even more nutritional problems. No one told her about the curse. And Mari simply said that things are worse here, and the ruler was talking about the apocalypse. The girls seem to be not fussing about it every day. It's not good to talk about it. The lady is afraid that her words might make the stranger angry. Well, I don't want to act like a driven girl. Still, she's a lady, an aristocrat. You need to trim yourself properly and embrace your fear. Kyria grins. Early. The little bird is soundly sleeping. The snow had a magical quality to it. Flower pots began to bloom. Because of the gloom, after many days a pleasant sun appeared. The trees embraced their greenery. The place has changed overnight. Now there is no more cold here, no more darkness, no more rottenness. Perhaps soon people will leave their homes. A woman looks out from the window of one of the budinki. Vona is shocked by the words, Oh God! The woman runs out into the street and feeds from some man where the snow falls. The passerby flies with her. The woman immediately remembers the rules of etiquette. I'm flying. I haven't been outside for so long. What happened this night? The man says he doesn't know. Finn grins. Maybe the spirits took pity on us? There is no other explanation for this strange and drastic change in weather. Hello man, like other locals, rejoices at the arrival of spring. It's almost time for the hotel to start feeling cloudy. The servants are waiting for the carriages and urging one of them. Hurry up, we'll be back soon. Hey, grab your luggage. The lady is already ready for the road. She is dressed in a handmade suit for traveling, a sweatshirt and a jacket. Needless to say, girls, the stench can already be strong. Kyria is so gentle. Lord Wang said unpromptedly, one more time, because in Mari was at the filthy camp, we put her in another carriage. The girl deposits her donation with the Lord's Dolon. Diakuyu Vanya. A man feeds the ice, which he can drink. It seems that the wine doesn't feel very good. Afraid that your words might create or anger the lady. Kyria grins. It's great, eat it. Van looks into the girl's eyes. What happened last night? Kyria is caught in the act. The girl thinks that she should tell the Lord. Tell the whole truth about this life's benefits and get rid of it. Quite an important choice. Van turns his head to the side of the carriage. His gaze turns to the man in the black suit, who sits calmly in the middle of the crew and waits until the stench disappears. Van carefully feeds the lady. Who is this people? Why did the spies show up? The Lord is alarmed by the presence of this stranger at the carriage. How can you give bad luck to a lady? This time the girl will remember this night. The cold wind whistles outside the window. Zaviryuka doesn't even think about stopping. Kiria and the stranger are sitting at the table. 
The man puts his hands on his knees and says, To understand what has happened, I need to come to the palace. Is it okay if I intrude? Kyria is shocked. What? No matter who wants to go with her at the same time. I'll lay on the other side, perhaps better yet, turn back home. The girl flowed from Rubina and the crown prince. Kyria, in a serious tone, says that she is not against it, but there is no possibility of destroying at once, and there is a fierce twist. Can you finish the check before the snow melts? feeds the lady. As soon as Kyria happens to end the trip, she intends to find out who this person is, or he's not a man. The stranger grins. People are such weak creatures. The rapt of his voice echoes some and sadness, things that cannot be overcome by natural hardships. For example, with a tsunami, a hurricane, a tornado. The man looks directly at the window and says, Do you really need to clear up the snow? Kyria faces the stranger. What does deprived of everything mean? The man waves his hand. The girl shouts, Ah! Vaughn senses that his neighbor wants Gothel to become friends. It's crazy there, thoughts to say to the lady. It seems like the snow is just spreading the hotel between friends. What is this person thinking about? One tree passes, two, three. Nothing happens. Kyria flattens her eyes. Look at the new picture at the window. There is no more snow. The stranger turns his head to the girl's side and grins loudly. Wonder what I remember. Kyria can't even understand the words. She's so enraged. The lady thought of saying that it would be better to teach a person with such strong magic. This is amazing. The person is introduced. I am Nathaniel, Nesvichain El Garnimia. Vin adds with a grin that the locals seem to call him Apocalypse. Kyria confirms her guesses. Lord Wang takes care of the girl, and everything is fine with her. The ladies will decide to know the necessary words. This man supported the Bukon homeland. Fawn to ask Van to talk about those who treated him kindly. Nathaniel asks the Lord, are you the leader of the Buchan homeland? Toy chuckles. So, the man looks directly at Van with a towering look from his blue eyes. Enemy. The sinister lord looks like this. You don't understand what's going on here, baby. Van yells at the lady. Miss Buchan? The girl looks at the restless person and hurries to reassure him. Don't boast, you are careless. Maybe. The lady is about to go to the carriage when her hoarse voice raps. Miss Buchan, this is the lord of the Gothelvin come here to talk to Kyria. The girl turns her head to her side and asks Van to check here. You won't take away too much time. I guess that's it. Vlasnik's glance at Gothel's Spavnaniv Diagnosti. Man radium. That Kyria was good for Rosmova. The girl and the girl came out of the crew, given the impression of strangers. Vlasnik feeds the lady. Did you awaken, Yogo? The girl crosses her arms over her chest and looks sideways. I wish I knew this. Kyria has not yet figured it out herself, so it is unlikely that we can help the ruler. Fawn feeds the man. That person is the apocalypse you were talking about? Vlasnik ruinously confirms that he doesn't know anyone. Vin Zagali does not have exact data about the apocalypse. All our knowledge is based on local legends. I want, the man murmurs. The children were studying at the hour of the massacre. Alvin is not in a human role. Vlasnik sounds with his eyes and adds that someone who, having learned the hidden essence, knows. Having known not just from the world, but from the memory of people. The locals otherwise forgot about the dead. Kyria carefully feeds the ruler. What happened to your child? The man's eyes become filled with confusion and we see. What have you earned? What did you dig here? The girl doesn't know what the truth is. There are endless thoughts in her head. Have I really broken the master's curse? I want the royal homeland to have magic, but not me. Kyria raises her hand to her chest and says, How did I awaken you? You need to know how. If you think of it, I'll send a sheet to Bukon's booths. Sela Rolano, the girl adds throughly. This is the name of the place, and you will be here for a long time. Vlasnik says, stunned. Are you taking him with you? The girl turns her back to the man. It'll happen. I didn't want it to happen like this. It's true. Some of Kyria's bajans began to flow out of their wealth. El Natomist got lost in everything. The girl thinks about Nathaniel. If he told the truth, then the seal of the prince was put in his place. Perhaps the royal homeland embraced the birth of this people. As soon as Kyria leaves, there is nothing wrong. We will soon reach the capital. The girl looks around. As long as the apocalypse is real and we slept here, there is no guarantee that the place will be safe when we leave. The lady should tell the ruler that for both of them, the shortest solution to the problem would be to work hard. Only those stinks can unravel this mystery. The man looks directly at the trees. It's been a long time since I've put fresh herbs on them. The ruler of Kyria, who first senses similar words from the aristocrats. Make sure you don't like to work on your own. Kyria is depicted clearly and says, Then shave in joy. 
Vlasnik bows to the lady. At parting, you should tell the girl to believe her. Kyria grins. In fact, she's not averse to helping this place and unraveling the mystery of the apocalypse. Sel Arellano, capital of the Triburin region. Here, as in most of the kingdom, it is fiercely turbulent. The most important place near the capital is the royal palace. I would like to go to one of the glamorous rooms and the great windows that line the steles and say, Your Majesty, we need to tell you something. The queen waves her important golden scepter, decorated with cat stones. Say, it seems the woman is not in the best mood. The black-haired man at the round eyepieces glazes his head. The Zaviryuka has not stopped for ten days. People are bragging. The queen is moving. The man adds that there are no special problems, but the royal magicians doubt that this is a major climatic anomaly. The woman turns to the magicians themselves, who are also in the room. What do you think about this? The men in white robes seem to have no idea what it is yet. One of them, perhaps the leader, adds, Alami Singh, this is not a natural phenomenon. The weather has improved. We urge you to understand what it is. The man speaks by looking directly at the window. Great plastic snow straightens to the ground with extreme fluidity. There is enough of it to make the whole place dry. The queen, a fair-haired woman wearing a warm red robe, is planning to say, A magician who has created a magician in the whole country. Who is the one who is created besides me? The magician puts his hand to his chest and in a lisping voice confirms, We think so. The man is sure that not a single word angered the queen. You don't want to have fun with your head. The queen walks at full speed straight to the window to marvel at where she stands. The subjects bow their heads before her. The woman puts her hand forward. Thin long fingers are covered with different rings. Looks like queen, you can really love it and embellish it, just like the red color. The woman says, tell me when you find out. The magicians who are free to go back bow to the queen. So your majesty, we're all dying. The magicians leave the room. The man in the eyepieces said, Your Majesty, my dear prince, ask about the Zeustrik. The woman says in an ominous tone, Please come in. Bright corridor to the palace. It looks as clean as ever. It is clear that the servants were getting ready before the prince arrived. Still, there will be a recession in May. Boy, come to the palace. The prince of the Preshoffs is not alone. Rubinia is in charge of him. The girl rustles her soft russet cloth. Today's lady looks wonderful, in principle as before. The chambers, servants, and butlers all stand in a row and bow to the royal couple. We are going, Your Majesty Prince Ethan, Miss Kessiu. The prince, who belongs to the aristocrats, does not turn his head towards his tributes. Rubinia behaves like this to herself like that. You know, this couple looks great. The crown prince raptums. He was already nervous about the future of Rose and the queen. Ru, Ruby. The girl will calm her boyfriend down. Fawn grins. Everything is good, Ethan. We are Obovyazkovo Otramamno allowed to Zaricini. The lady is so in love with her. Vaughn is so naive. Rubinia and the prince approach the throne room. The servants open the massive white doors. The couple go inside. It's too late to go out, as if Ethan doesn't want anything. The queen sits on the throne. Ethan loudly floats with her. I float, wise woman Triberina. I guess he doesn't call the woman by her name. Perhaps it's not like that here. The queen is not worthy of looking at the couple. Vaughn puts her hand to her chest and thinks about it. This woman's name is Ginger Oravan Bridge. There you are, the 18th queen of this land, assuming everything will be fine after her Ethan will become the ruler of the kingdom. The prince says that the blessed ones have come to ask. Blessings for the love of Rubinia. The woman clenched her teeth. It's good. Vaughn is not at all pleased that the future king is planning to make friends with a commoner. The queen says, You are unprecedentedly young, but it's quite sweet. I thought as a provincial girl I'll tear you apart. The rest of the words are lost in Rubinia. No way, the queen continues. It's good. Possibly I'm a terrible judge of people. Rubinia grins. It's great. In the whole country it is impossible to find people as beautiful as you. The queen giggles. The blonde-haired woman's subjugation does not detect her. The prince tries to rectify the situation. In a vibrant tone he said, Your Majesty. But the woman doesn't let him finish. In the eyes of the queen she burns with anger. You disappoint me. The Buchan homeland cannot be wasted. Do you want this village woman to take the throne? The queen turns her gaze to the coat of arms of her homeland, which depicts a leopard. You swore that you would not destroy this family. Why didn't I fuck my son so badly? Are you okay, prince? The woman says in a meaningful tone. The prince lowers his head. I, I... Vin doesn't know what to say without spilling the beans. Rubinia falls on her knees. I'll ask again, your majesty. Vaughn broke the rules again. She rubbed elbows with members of the royal family. 
The girl opens her eyes wide. I don't have a rich and famous homeland, I swear. No matter how bad things happen to us, my wife would never know the prince. The boys hate the words of Kohanoi. The tears appear before your eyes. Ruby. The queen watches over this performance. It would have been funny, but it wouldn't have been so funny. Would a woman say, does the phrase cock is like a pheasant fit? The news about the rupture of Zeruchins has already expanded, but I don't need a reason for a headache. But the queen understands that you can't just get up from her. So what will come of it? The woman gives her blessing to the couple. The prince kneels on Rubinia's hand. You take your betrothed by the hand and say in a long voice, This is such a mercy, your majesty. I can't believe what you've given me this year. Rubinia grins and says her message to the queen. You are very kind, queen. What a great man, your majesty. The doors to one of the rooms are connected to the palace. A short woman with dark hair came into the middle. Was the squab near the center successful? Miss Poor Duquesne. The red-haired girl with the red cloth is dissatisfied and says, Ha! Huh? Everything that I can earn, don't ask them to give it to us. There are no other options left. The girl turns her head to the side. I think we won't be able to supply sapphire products. I knew for sure that the ship could not be destroyed by the snow. The girl clenches her hand into a fist. I'm so worried about this crazy thing. Should I just burn everything here? The servant takes these words seriously. Miss, this is the palace. Both pink girls and women shave their hair. Go to Rubinia's room. Oh my God, the girl hums. I'm sure that she just broke the rules of etiquette. The girl splashes in the valley with a grin on her face and says, Why don't you see Miss Port Duquesne? Rudo Velosa streamed. Good afternoon, Miss Cassiu. Blonde hair says, Did you guys dance at the ball? Duquesne raises his eyebrows, teasing the girl, so that he doesn't want to talk to her. Hal Rubinia does not understand the tension. Vona puts her hand to her cheek. How are you doing? Oh, I thought Mrs. Buchan destroyed her mat so she could be on her own. The red-haired man crosses his arms over his chest and coldly confirms, Ha, ah, it seems like there's good humor today. What happened? The girl began to say, So what a miracle. His majesty allowed us to become friends with Itanchik, like Rubinia. The ore hair flattens his eyes wide in shock. What greatness? Officially? You can't believe that the queen went like that. This is simply inappropriate. The ore haired man speaks to Rubinia. You are so innocent. They took away someone else's betrothed. The girl looks directly at the luxurious chandelier. So Mrs. Buchan herself was ready to open the bonds and accepted our company or not. Rudo Velosa says that Lady Buchan simply has a brain. It's Baron Kessiu who taught you to write about this. Why are you a lovebird? Vaughn feeds. The girl seems to understand her superiority compared to others. Rubinia sticks out the strands of her luxurious long hair. However, what are those that you achieved with your hair? It looks like you are claiming to be my betrothed. Rubinia smiles fearfully. Don't you know? Vaughn tries to cap the ore hair. It's not fitting for her to speak to her in such a tone. Alla Duquesne does not fall for cheap provocation. Vaughn coldly points out, It looks like you're having a funny conversation. Rubinia shudders. Vaughn didn't realize this. A dark-haired woman, another friend of Kyria, suddenly enters the room. Rubinia immediately spoke to her. I'm flying. Are you the niece of Yang Ye, the Duke of Old Ciudad? The girl, dressed in blue cloth, says in a streamlined voice, So here I am. Good afternoon. I suppose you have heard about those people who reported to us Lady Kesu. Rubinia hastens to correct herself. Oh, I said it wrong. But the girl doesn't want to step up. Miss Buchan and Miss Duquesne are my friends. Repeat what you said. I don't know the blonde hair. As soon as the news is there, they are likely to shout all the time. Less than an hour. I will be busy with preparations before the ceremony of entrustment. Rubinia looks around and grins at the aristocrats. I hope that when I become queen you will be quieter. I'm so amazed. Rubinia rustles the cloth. The red-haired one marvels after the fair-haired one. Miss Duquesne is so convinced that there are no words to describe Rubina's behavior. The dark-haired one tries to calm down his friend Six. Calm down, Loran. There's no sense to resist. Rudohair snorts. Ha, I know that. Zreshtoya, she said over her bag. It's all the same to make friends. Your friend means that the social leftists will have a drive for tiles. The new noblewoman became the prince's betrothed, visiting the Buchan homeland and helping to rebuild the country. This new thing is not beyond the reach of the cooks, who have nothing to work with. The dark-haired woman closes her eyes and says loudly, I think it's good that Kiria went. She won't have the chance to hear the whole brood. You don't deserve anything. Before the speech, the dark-haired man said, Did you contact her? Rudovalosa confirms, Not yet. Vaughn said that I found a leaf. How can I get home? 
The ale leaf can be rubbed through the wrapper. The black-haired girl looks directly at the window. I'm sure nothing happened. Vaughn praises her friend. Duquesne hastens to reassure the girl. Kiri can talk to herself. This is not a problem for her. You know how smart and self-sufficient she is. As it turns out, Lady Buchan is going to get into trouble with him. Tim is at the carriage for an hour. The hand of the mouse points towards Nathaniel. The girl tries to smile. The man can't even take his eyes off her. The silence near the carriage becomes uncomfortable. This is the stamp on Kyria. She would have liked to go with Marie, and not with this guy. The man is talking. The girl thought, even though I said that you can go with me, I have to watch him. The crew is going up the mountain. Kyria folds her hands together. She boasts, because she's not in the mood for running into this mess. I'm not surprised that I couldn't let you in if I was more respectful. The girl glances at Nathaniel. Since this Garney man is a powerful apocalypse, about whom people have created legends, then you should carefully trim him. Nathaniel looks directly at the girl. She shudders. There is no way we can reach those piercing blue eyes that stare straight into the soul. The man smiles and chuckles. Kyria's behavior seems to be mediocre. The girl thinks that Nathaniel's calmness is calm before the anger. Letty lowers her eyes. Fawn doesn't understand why his smile sends a shiver through his body. However, says Kyria, it's much calmer tonight. Surely humans can control people's fear. The girl clenches her hands into fists. Besides, who knows if you have enough claws to get into the trust of the victim. The guy wants to start a relationship with Kyria, so that it won't be so boring. Is Sela Relano still the capital? Nourishes the veins. The girl's food is amazing. The guy says, what did Sel? Kyria confirms that Vin is deprived of a symbol of place. That's all. Rosmova is so wonderful. Nathaniel cackled with obvious speeches. When his food comes, the lady is even more shocked. And Lauren Shaw? Lauren Shaw? The girl thinks through her thoughts. She tries to guess what it is. More precisely, who? Ho Lauren Shaw, the fair-haired man in the red cloak, is a henchman. He is one of two immortals. During the hour of war, I fought in the battle of the ruler of Balbri. According to legend, he shook the ocean with one swing of his sword. The girl feeds Nathaniel. Are you talking about the henchman? Vin is alive in the villages, for I will not have mercy. We haven't heard anything from the old people continues Kyria, without even getting to the bottom of the man's appearance. So it seems that it's time to go out to the river. Raptum Kyria mumbles. Vaughn understands that Nathaniel became angry in a friendly way. The girl squashes her eyes wide open from exhaustion. The man puts his hand to his chest and hums thoughtfully. It's true that both the Vin and the Forager are enemies, right? The lady is again furious with herself. Kyria lowers her head. I don't want to agree. It would be a little sense as if I was feeding about him for the sake of revenge. The girl considers it more important to watch over Nathaniel. Toy feeds. How is life? What are you talking about? Nutritious food. The man clutches his cane in his hand. In my time in this homeland they fought for authority. It's ruinous for the girl to say that everything is just the same. She couldn't even imagine that aristocrats had once treated themselves like wild animals. The man calls them pathetic. They are pitiful people who do not know what goodness, honor, and goodness are. It stinks and smells like spitting. Kyria looks at the person. The hour is passing. The carriage, drawn by black horses, clunks. Kyria needs to go out into the street to stretch her legs and think about everything that is happening. Fawn feeds Lord Van as Mari is there. The man confirms that the servant is unknown. The girl says, Please kindly please inform me. Kyria lowers her eyes to the ground. From now on it's truly scary. And Mari is stronger than the average person. Well, we just can't get over it. The girl looks directly at the carriage. Do I need to calmly bring him to the people? What kind of person calls himself Apocalypse? It's scary to realize what could happen. The girl looks around the place. The greenery on the trees pleases the eye. For now, everything is calm. What if Nathaniel or Apocalypse wants to start a war? You need to be unique. Kyria turns to Van. We're hanging out at the place, and Marie needs to be shown to a doctor. She may be bleeding internally. Lord speak, everything is clear. The girl gets into the carriage. The carriage is spinning. The man tisked, Are we going to Alsace? Looks like you can't figure it out from Kyria. Ale show parobish. Kyria reluctantly admits, So if you don't mind, I would like to get together here in one place. The man seems to think that everything is fine, but he still doesn't get to her. Kyria speaks sarcastically for her kindness and enthusiasm. Alas, it seems that Nathaniel did not notice her dissatisfaction. The man says, Well, what's the plan? Why will you be timid? The girl seems to want to go to the place of Envic and find a doctor for Enmari. 
The lady's thoughts are to say that it is still necessary to send someone to the capital. Laurent and Marie quickly react. The town of Yenvik is located near the capital of the Marquis of Vermont. The girl would like to get away with something, but for an hour she can't think about it. A lady is no longer befitting a Marquis, and even more so his son. There's not a lot of talk about them. Ayla, if the place and the whole country are under threat, it won't take an hour to sort through. The girl turns her head to the side. Why, I don't want to fuck you. Nathaniel Movshki watches over Kyria. In principle, the girl explains, we can go around. Even on their carriage there is no native coat of arms. The girl is furious with the man. I let Van go ahead to book the hotel for us. The guy is getting better. The lady's gaze suggests a bath of nourishment for her head. You can't understand who is guilty and why he behaves so strangely. Otherwise it's hot, but it's impossible for anyone to come out. A decade has passed. The sun is sinking completely below the horizon, filling the gloom of the warm lower colors. The crew hesitates. Nathaniel and Kyria leave the carriage. The girl looks around the majestic Kamyana Hotel. It's disgusting. It's not a palace, but you can still live, means girl. A man in a light suit immediately encourages the hotel to reach its guests. I'm flying, Vin shouts. The man has gray hair and a thin hair. You are Miss Buchan, right? A wine that makes you a little nervous. Vlasnik airs his song with the guise of a Kustinka. I'm hanging out at the Hotel Bilalan. Nathaniel measures the man with a serious, cold gaze. Toy is shocked to say, and gel. The man runs to hell. He was in such a hurry that he let his hostina in. Kyria thinks about saying that she has a headache. All through this guy Nathaniel. The girl says, who do you recommend? One hundred hundred rubles the ruler has got to pay for food. Nathaniel looks at Kyria with thoughts. I have a lot to handle, don't boast about me. The girl opens her eyes wide, no matter where you go. Nathaniel, not turning back to the girl's accusation, said, I'll turn around before we leave. You won't have the chance to beat me. Kyria nourishes and is far away. Think so, the man confirms. The girl marvels after him. Is it okay to just let him go? He's already a powerful magician, but he's definitely not a kind person. I'm sorry the girl believes that giving the man a drink is absolutely on her side. Kyria says unobtrusively, I think it's not very easy for you alone. Can you send the servants? Nathaniel mutters, Here. Vin looks directly at Kyria with a piercing look. What's good for the sake of comfort? Okay, I accept your proposition. Kyria should not take his eyes off the man. Vona folds her hands together and squeezes the cloth. So you can do a little trick with him. Golovna, you don't have to go too far, the girl says. I'll ask you again, but apparently I'm uneasy about letting you go alone. The man lowers his gaze to his boots. Are you wagging? So, says the lady. Nathaniel walks up to her and looks straight into her eyes. This trick is useless if you want people to feel the truth. The girl doesn't seem to know. Look at the evening sky. The man says, I haven't earned anything. Paki, Kyria adds. Vaughn doesn't trust this guy. Nathaniel says he's saying goodbye to his walk. The man grins. Baby, if you don't let me be bothered, it's coming straight to us. The man doesn't look angry. Kyria's eyes sound, What? I'm wary that Nathaniel didn't notice and just took a walk. Everything must go smoothly. Maybe try to rub yourself into trust? And the tense rows of Korea and Nathaniel cuts off the hair of Gothel. The gray-haired man folds his hands at once and understands every lady who is joking. When I said that Vermont is from my homeland, Vlasnik adds, Kyria flattens her eyes wide. It doesn't matter at all. The Marquis doesn't want to be so bachita. Nathaniel grins. This is a walking disaster, Kyria barks thoughts. Vaughn feeds Vlasnik Gothelia, as this person found out why she was blundering here. The walls of the Vermont Palace were white. The Marquise's son, a fair-haired man in a blue suit, said politely, Oh, Kyria, your name sounds so wonderful. The girl said in awe, God. The man raises the lady's hand to her chest to kiss. I'm so excited for the moment of our partner. And the girl tidies up her bottom and makes friends nicely, so that the man doesn't appear. Thank you for the hospitality, Mr. Vermont. I'm also happy about our little friend. Kyria frowns at herself. It's a bad habit to talk like this, because the place of Envic is under his control. And Anmari needs a doctor. That lady doesn't understand how the Marquis can ruin the whole place. The man looks out of thought. Ah, Kiri, you are such a cold goddess. How I love theatricality and metaphor. The man looks directly at the ice with his gray eyes and adds, For your crooked heart, I still have a spark of hope. The Marquise's son is trying with all his might to destroy Kyria. That girl smiles almost affectionately at this short time. It's on the right, mister. 
Look, hello, I don't think this is the time for such intellects. The man doesn't feel it. Vin squeezes her hands and says, Before the moon or the end of the sun, my heart is burning like an inferno. Kyria laughs. Why am I feverish? And yet their thoughts rise up as they say, I could have learned several spells from Anne Marie. The man began to say, So. Kyria says, Oh, from here. The ruler of this palace, the Marquis of Vermont, enters the room. The man curls up his thin gray hair and says, How querulous, Miss Buchan? The girl bows to the man. I fly, Marquis of Vermont. We didn't worry about the new banquet. Whether you want a lady or an unacceptable person, the etiquette goes above and beyond. Nothing comes into place. The palace of the Marquis of Vermont assumes a kind of ominous grandeur in the dark. So the Budinki are similar to their rulers. Kyria and the Marquis drink tea in the same room. On the table there are glasses and cups for expensive English tea. Vermont Senior says, You're going to Elsass. The man doesn't check until the girl confirms. Vin folds his hands on his knees and continues, You are probably tired from a long trip. Why did you bother such a hotel? The Marquis of Vermont of Valencia is a very cunning and approachable person, similar to a snake. Kyria knows this, but does not show her feelings. Let me tell you, I didn't wake up the worms. Vermont Senior grins. Nezi, if you don't want the place where I'm going, call me. However, your father told me, be respectful to my dear. It seems that the Duke said that Kyria would hesitate here. The girl's thoughts are cursed by her father. The girl grins at the Marquis. I understand that my father is worried. Don't worry. The man throws up his hands. Yanni also said that you and my son have been the same age. It would be bad if you got to know each other better. The Marquis's son clears his throat against his fist. You are not sorry for the words of the father, but you yourself deserve Kyria. The cheeks of the young Vermont are burning. Kyria is angry, not streaming, swearing at the father in the harshest words. Of course, not out loud. Vaughn tries to get out of it. This is a good idea, let's hurry. The girl seems that the stench is so visible on the schedule. I still need to write my father's sheet. Vermont Sr. will laugh. For us old men, the hour is running out differently. The man is angry. Our son has a monotonous and boring day. Kyria laughs. You are frying, you are a very energetic person. The Marquis tilts his head to the side and says with a bag in his voice, No, not at all. I'm old. Every day I'll feel better. It seems that we can't come to terms with the fact that we are getting old. Elvin hastens to change the topic. The flowers have blossomed. Why shouldn't we marvel at them? Kyria squeezes her cloth with her fingers in her white mittens. The girl grins. The flowers bloom in the spring, Marquise. You have misled the poor Iroku. The man says, Miss Buchan, do you think the old one is old? The Marquise's son says, Kiri, you are so poisonous like a bud buried under the snow. Kiria will close her eyes. What an under-romantic she looks like. The man puts his hand to his chest. As much as you boast about me, I don't demand that for your sake. I'll be happy to spend the whole day with you. Kiria sits. Fawn squeezes her mouth. The girl tries to overcome herself. Just one day. The Marquis says that there is no greater compromise. You need to wait a bit. Although the girl doesn't worry about Nathaniel's reaction, it's not pleasant for Anne-Marie to lie by the carriage. If the lady does not give up immediately, she is unlikely to find a doctor here. Kyria turns her gaze to the Marquis. Why should I inform you? Thank you for the turbo. Vermont Senior smiles sweetly and rolls his eyes. Good. The girl is brought from the soft red sofa. I'll go to my room to let you know after a long and not-so-easy trip. I think you'll understand it yourself. The man tries to ask Kyria. Hello, Lady Buchan. Aren't you going to recommend your friend? The girl understands why she shouldn't talk about Nathaniel. Nick. The black-blue sky is filled with sparkles. Some of them highlight the paths of ruined travelers, and some of them boast of their beauty and inaccessibility. Kyria is already in her room. Vaughn sit at the dressing table. The girl is wearing a nightgown. I have had my hair braided for a long time. Kyria looks tired. The girl looks around the luxurious apartment. Paintings by famous artists on the walls. Expensive furniture. I admit, says Kyria. I can't resist the fact that there are good minds here. Nathaniel, it seems, is not dissatisfied. Kyria marvels at the mirror. Zikavo, Van took Anne Marie to the doctor. You need to know what's good about this situation. The girl may not be able to leave. Marquis of Vermont has a new problem. It looks like we have no idea who Nathaniel is. The girl guessed this word about her friend. While the Marquis hasn't believed, it's obvious that this is not. It's true, like a cunning great serpent. If Cyrus does not earn as much as he wants, payment to the Vermontians will be cruel. This is the homeland of the military with a lot of dedicated soldiers. The stench can unleash a bloody war between families. These are very capable people. 
In Kiria's thoughts, a small vig wiggles. My little bird. The little girl shudders and turns her head towards the door. Who the hell is it at this hour? It leads directly to the exit from the room. The girl opens the door. Unrespectful at all, this bastard is an idiot. Clearly, young Vermont is not very intelligent. About Vavka washing. A man stands on the other side and shouts, This king is waiting to kidnap you on this sad night. The girl says, God, what time is it? The man waves his hand and says with tragedy in his voice, Kiri, you will get more expensive with a careless person. If you can't sleep, I will nobly kill you. The girl puts her hand to her forehead. I think I found a new way to bring myself to the afterlife. The man does not speak his throat. The woman turns her back to the Marquise's son. Vaughn says, What a fool. I feel like if I pretend to be a sleeper I'll climb up the wall. The girl pulls on her black robe on the hutra. She turns to the room and closes the doors. It's important for Kira to work loudly so that the person can feel it. He raises his head. The lady feels a dull sound below. Vaughn goes straight to the door. I'll have a chance to talk to him in a special way. The girl doesn't even want to work, but there is no other way out. Because he couldn't go down and quiet that bad romantic, Nathaniel had to conquer his homeland of Vermont in one night for ruining his dream. The lady goes out into the corridor and looks at the window. Vaughn's eyes widen. God, no. The girl is hanging out on Nathaniel Street. Man, go somewhere. Lighters illuminate the territory of Vermont. It's the girl's job to pave the way for him. Vaughn hurries to Nathaniel. We cannot allow him to leave the palace. The lady turns her head. You can't find the person. Did I ruin him? Raptum wants to say, I caught you. The lady shudders. Nathaniel is standing behind her. The girl stumbles over the stone and begins to fall. Otherwise, she will be able to avoid contact with the gravel. Nathaniel comes to the point of catching up with her. He now looks into her eyes. Kyria opens her eyes wide. Mr. Nathaniel. She tries to smile in order to grab her little one now. I wonder what she herself doesn't understand. Nathaniel is leaving. It's a girl's thing to say. What an escape. The man repeats, Zbig? It seems that he noticed that Kiria is trying to overcome the Yuma. The girl will guess, but she still wants to try. She coughs into her fist, grins and looks like she was just taking a walk. The man tilts his head to the side. Do you look like that? Yogo is not so easily deceived. Even though Kiria is true, they look smart and they look cute. Nathaniel looks directly at the girl's nightgown, which is visible from under the mantle. Kiria closes her eyes and says, It's rude to be seen on ice like that. A person doesn't care about respect. He turns his gaze to the lectar and feeds the girl. So you call the one who is following someone at this hour, lady. The girl admits to herself that she cannot overcome any man. Vona extends her hand to you. Can I ask you to walk me to my room? Nathaniel takes Kyria's tendentious bottom and grins. This smile is not like the one before. There's warmth and space there. She has no arrogance or coldness. A man and a girl are gardening. Nathaniel is not surprised at Kyria. Lady marks this. I want to stop scratching the feeling of the man, wondering what happened to him. The girl ice frowns her eyebrows. Are you angry? I would like to understand what he's thinking about. Kyria herself doesn't know what she needs. Let a man say, at any time, Miss Buchan, I seem to be boasting about what I can lose from the unacceptable. Kyria will reply, it's not like that. Nathaniel glares at her, no? The girl sings and firmly repeats, no, it's not like that at all. The ladies seem to have no slight weaknesses. After these words, Kyria sharply turns her head to the side and flattens her eyes. Vaughn didn't want to say it out loud. After a few seconds, Kyria dares to look at the man again. Yogoviraz is neutral. It is impossible to read even one emotion. The girl says in a loud voice, T just what? It looks like she's going to explain the man's words. A lay toy interrupts. Vermont! What? The lady looks around. Oh no. Here you go. The Marquise's son is rapidly approaching the bet whose idiot has a drink of liqueur in his hands. Tsikavo, here you go. How would you like to spend an hour or hit someone on the head? Hurry up, first option. The denunciation of the person was heartbreaking. Perhaps he's drunk. The man hums. Kiri! The man points his finger at Nathaniel. What are you doing, Kiri? The girl opens her eyes wide. About him, I completely forgot about him. The lady's gaze falls on the dance in the hands of the Marquis's son. Is this liqueur? Oh my God! There wasn't much left. It's scary to realize what drunken Vermont is seeing. The man turns to Nathaniel. Since you're a knight, then call your name. It's time to decide to fight a powerful magician who can change the weather. El Nathaniel does not resemble a drunken man. Kyria just grins. Mr. Vermont is rude and smells quite wonderful and coppery. Kyria raises her eyebrows. 
Yes, no. He's fighting, but he doesn't have anything useful. So? Nathaniel feeds with deep wonder. The Marquise waves her hand as she dances. I'm more embarrassed. This Chakrai has fooled your head. Kyria grins at young Vermont. Nathaniel flashes his eyes cheerfully. After a few weeks, the girl turns to the dark-haired one. Eat. Can I ask you about the service? The man without a word says, It's great. Kyria asks Nathaniel to allow her to marry him herself. The lady thinks that if there are no dark-haired people here, then everything may not end well. In this region, everyone tries to achieve their goals through rudeness and force, and the son of the Marquis of Vermont is not to blame. It just seems nice. Kyria approaches the fair-haired man. Ah, oh, the smell of alcohol. The girl feeds young Vermont. Why do I pester you so often? That mouse is visible on her. Finally, a person collects his thoughts and says, I believe you. My little lark, I bless you, don't leave me. The girl says, and what are you thinking about? Young Vermont is entombed in hell. I got up and saw Kyria at the ball. Apparently the girl, who was still engaged to the crown prince, smiled at you. It was time to give the Marquise's son a dance. How can you convince me now? The man harbors characteristic tragedy. The girl walks back a little and smiles nervously. I had no love whatsoever for the son of the Marquis of Vermont. You are the one to whom my homeland will be placed at the forefront. Kyria asks the person to show the same respect in his testimony. This hateful bastard is worth it. Alas, the man does not understand. Vin grabs the girl's hands. Young Vermont sneers at the girl and says, I know that you are not a dissolute woman. Kyria opens her eyes wide. What? What are you talking about? The Marquis's son asks Kyria to sing with him. Vin, what does he know about her breakup with the spasmodic prince? It seems that the homeland of Vermont has been for seven generations. Your father will definitely give his life, young Vermont chanted. The girl is so shocked that she doesn't know what the truth is. Vaughn grins affectionately at Mr. Vermont. As a member of the Buchan family, I want to have a good fight with you. The man grins widely at the witness. Hey, Kyria goes back another step. I don't know that you misunderstood me. The girl takes the man's hand. He feeds whatever he wants to say. Kyria frowns. This idiot doesn't understand that she doesn't want to marry someone else. Of course, they can play nasty fire with her. There is nothing good about the filthy people from their homeland. However, when someone is on his way, in the wake of the girl's day, the Marquis of Vermont stands with a quantity of wine in his hands. This man is also cunning. Vine gently manipulates everything around him, in front of him, and with his son. Alakiri will not fall for his trick. Go tell the people that you are coming. The girl makes it clear to the Marquis's son that she doesn't want her to be in trouble. Person of images. Turbuvat? Kiri, I am a descendant of my homeland Vermont. Finn admits that the girl deserves that unknown wonderful man. Kiria confirms this. That's right. There are also people you don't care for. The man hums. What? It seems to me that there is nothing left that didn't belong to Vermont. How can the Marquise's son have mercy? Kiria smiles and hums quietly. A second later she says, Greatness. With a singing world it's so effective. Nathaniel is richly respected for the Marquise's son. What is missing from your blue eyes? The hour is passing. The girl quickly moves along the corridor. Rojev's shoes clatter against the fabric. The lady must say that she acted so rudely in her life. Now Kyria is dressed in soft brown cloth, which fits perfectly to her shoes. The ice girl smiles brightly. How soon will my father be recognized? Luckily, Nathaniel is off to a good start. The girl obviously is not at all happy that she let him out of the field, or else she would have killed the Marquis's son. Kyria will remember the recent Rosmova and young Vermont. The girl sings that Nathaniel doesn't feel her super ear. Lady smiles. Vaughn passes the mirror. Despite the recent incident, she is still in a good mood. It's a girl's idea to say, we're dying right after dinner. She hasn't spoken to Nathaniel yet. Kyria suspects that he is just walking in the garden. The girl immediately senses a sound. Vaughn's eyes widen and she turns her head to the side. Kyria holds a great bouquet of blue Trojans in front of her. The Marquise's son is after him. The man no longer looks as bruised and miserable as he did at night. In fact, it's already sitting. The girl goes wild. Mr. Vermont? The man looks directly at her with his gray eyes. Miss Buchan, yesterday I indulged in a greedy meal. Kyria tries to backtrack. What? The Marquise said. I will not respect your tender heart. I behave thoughtlessly and selfishly, isn't that right? Kyria sits and thinks. That's great. I didn't think that you would understand your mercy. Alas, these words do not harm the girl at all. The man had already sang a song of hostility at her. And let me say, I don't even accept hostility. Kyria turns to the Marquis's son. 
Please, give me a serenade. It's tight. Man of shock. What? You can ask Kyria to check, but the girl doesn't react at all. So young Vermont is stagnating in strength. Vin pesters the lady and quite roughly grabs her hand. The girl looks up at the new one. Vona surveys the man with a cold gaze. So my name is Kyria. Until now she could not tell her point of view because she was the betrothed of a prince. But suddenly everything changed. Now the girl has no harmless status, which the goiter requires to endure images. Kyria says, For us there is a boundary. Haven't you heard a little about me? The girl knows very well that people talk behind her back. They have always called her a cruel or wicked girl, who is known both to aristocrats and to poor people. They also called it lightness. Before the speech, no less than women suffered the fate of these tiles. Rich aristocrats were also not averse to letting loose their long tongues. The girl opens her eyes wide and says, One easily important woman. She sent a letter to the unknown who had been following her today. The man understands. What can I say about Kyria? And begins to tremble with rage. His hand squeezes the bouquet of flowers, but the girl is not going to slur. There is a loud voice. At the hour of marriage with the lady, he hit the servant with a sword. Do you think that a person can behave like this? The man squeezes his mouth. Kyria's eyes will close. Are you crying? Hmm. Such a weakling from Vermont would be overcome by such a vardo. Vin is steadily giving himself away as a face, but that's not really the case. That time Kyria had mercy on her servants. The man glares. You're so mean. I want to give you the opportunity. The lady laughs evilly. How is it possible? The Marquise's eyebrows raise. A chance to get married for those you gave me. Without knowing what you are doing. I can't believe it. You must not lose your betrothed in shame. And to whom? Continues Vine. Like girls from the lowest estate. What a disappointment. Kyria no less angrily confirms that these words are unacceptable. Don't bother the guy anymore. Niv took away the mask of nobility from him. The Marquise throws a bouquet on the pretext. You are a cunning and mean fox. The denunciation of young Vermont is red hot. A girl's kindness is important, but what does it matter since she doesn't care if you're nice to her? Kyria wonders, when will we be dear? But more, who asked for Yogo Butimilim? The girl raises her hand to her chest. As I am a cunning fox, then you are a wild boar. Have you tried to cope with the situation for the first time? Vaughn says with mockery in her voice. The man waves at her. How dare you talk to me like that? Kyria does not look away from his hand, which is rapidly approaching. The girl closes her eyes and turns her head to the side. If this blow allows me to go, then let me go. How lady does not feel pain. Vaughn doesn't sense anything. The girl heard a wonderful sound, similar to the blow and scream of the Marcus's son. What happened? Kyria flattens her eyes. Look at the dark-haired man in front of you. Vin holds a bouquet of blue Trojans in his hands. It looks like he hit young Vermont with him. The dark-haired man grins at the man. Oops. Then with great attentiveness I say, I'll ask again, otherwise I can't allow you to beat the lady. The warrior of Syria turns his head to the side. He smiles at her, and his blue eyes twinkle. Lady opens her eyes wide in shock. Nathaniel? The Marquise tells herself with an obscene husky, which is similar to an incoherent murmur. Kaviti, so that you can get right into your face and don't let people die. Nathaniel sews the end of the bouquet together with one finger. Young Vermont screams and flops down on the floor alongside the blue Trojans. Finn looks miserable. Kyria rages up to her warrior. Vi! Nathaniel grins and hands the girl one blue cord as he begins to sniffle from the bouquet. Are you flying? Leda turns her head to the side. The Marquise feeds. Why is Mr. Nathaniel here? Aren't you going to dinner? Say the man. The petals from the flower are beginning to fall off. The dark-haired man calmly responds to the young Vermont's food. As a guest, I ask you to bring him. Kyria tells people that no one knows anything. Toy lightly waves his hand. Ha ha, I know about that. The girl closes her eyes and grins. It was so good, after yesterday's riot. Lady take the man by the elbow, but it looks like the couple won't be allowed to sing so easily. They say Vermont, which is about to fail. Stop it, Kiri. The man hands the girl a tattered bouquet and says loudly, I'm a gentleman, so anyway... I'll give you one more chance to get married. Kyria snorts disrespectfully. If you say so, you need to get off me. From narcissistic Indic. Still, I will never understand my pardons. Natural pride and stupidity do not rejoice. The man, it seems, is immediately bursting with rage, squealing through his teeth. I can't understand. Kyria's words about externality are spinning in his head. The man raises his eyebrows and opens his eyes wide. You said that I'm ugly and ugly. The girl with the deep pity in her voice says, Oh, really? Menuscota. 
It seems that the rest of the time I became honest with myself. The man trembles furiously. You! T. Nathaniel snorts mockingly. It's funny how disgusting and pathetic the behavior of young Vermont is. He senses a sniff and is caught in the act. The dark-haired man raised his hand to his chest. Oh, don't show me your respect. Continue to chew. You are already openly laughing at this stupid man. And surprisingly, young Vermont needs reason to understand. Vin points with his hand with a bouquet at the dark-haired man's side. You laughed at me. Kyria has thoughts of saying, It's not very polite to speak. What, this is a creaturely instinct? The girl puts her hand forward and asks Vermont to check. Alas, you can't spin the disturbed man anymore. Vin rudely greets Kyria. Out of the way! The girl screams. Vermont does not sacrifice any respect. Now you just want to get to Nathaniel in order to take revenge on him for the image. But the man does not understand how to earn money. I know everything through the bouquet that hits you. There is a slight stain on the forehead of the Marquis. Rosy, without a doubt, Garnikviti. But the stench swells with sharp thorns. Don't forget about it. Nathaniel looks directly at the man with a cold look. You, first of all, you don't know how to behave properly around a lady. The dark-haired man knocks on a soft cane. Vin turns to accusations to Kyria. In a different way, you are the one who can get off. Our standards are quite high. The girl glares at Nathaniel. Elvermont does not allow the man to come to an agreement. Sin Marquise clenches her hands into fists. Hey, knock it off! How dare you impersonate me? Kyria frowns and thinks, it's better to speak to him informally. The girl tries to gain respect for herself. Gay. Vermont can't calm down right now, even though it knows how it might end up. But the man is not getting ready. Vin throws his mitten down. Then he points his finger at Nathaniel. Good. It looks like you're ready for a duel. Kyria grins. The man's words sound stupid, but Nathaniel is unlikely to be any good. Ale's appearance as a girl quickly changes from cheerful to shocked when he puts a mitten on the underside of a friend. This is what the dark-haired man should do. Arena and palace of the Marquis. There was more than one important figure in this place. There was a lot here, I think, of cruelty, disappointment, hatred, and blood. Kyria explodes to Nathaniel. Here is God. The man who is calmly drinking tea says, Why do you think so? Looks like he's not boasting at all. Kyria looks directly at young Vermont, who is preparing for battle. It's not just that he gives himself a hero. He's quite strong, but he wants to act like a pig. Nathaniel raises the cup to his mouth. I'll let you in, that's it. Neither the great sword of the Marquise's son nor his wife fought any kind of attack on the dark-haired one. Kyria touches her shoulder with her hand and says coldly, Yo was dedicated to the lyric. But probably for those who are the son of the Marquis, and not through his skills, Nathaniel said ironically, What kind of fool is it that you can't remember the Ten Commandments of the Celebrant? Why don't you need to be a genius? Kyria laughs. Vaughn puts her hand on her chest. You're frying badly, I'm not cool. The man glances at his tea and says that the serving aristocrat may remain calm. Kyria, intent on wondering where ahead, confirms, I don't think it's normal for this situation. Nathaniel says, Which one? The lady is shaking. She senses some black smoke coming from Nathaniel. The man shines with his incredible eyes, and it seems that Kyria can also fry. Well, Oravin Bridge didn't fit, he said. And do you think this fool can beat me? The girl turns her head to the side of the man. I appreciate the wonderful sound that sounds like cracking porcelain. So yes, Nathaniel's cup was cracked with a pick. Axis, Axis, and you will fly apart into friends. There's nothing left to be said. A person can control his magic. The girl frowns. You're a fool, that's it. Alavi Mage and you were challenged to a duel. Kyria knows how to foolishly fight with swords in such a fit. Nathaniel picks up his cane. That's right, that's it. The man agrees. Kyria feeds so that it can vicarize magic. There are two cat stones lying on the ground. The girl speeds up with them, as if everything is wrong. The stones vibrate pleasantly in the sun. The stench is quite similar to earrings. They can be vicarized as a way of embellishing, but there is no sense. They have magical energy. The girl looks directly at young Vermont, who is avidly training before the fight. The man brandishes his majestic sword. It's amazing that this welding has gone so far. Ale as if it weren't there, the minds of the battle are still toiling. Kyria seriously tells the dark-haired man that victory does not matter. The man points out, I didn't win the duel. Vin squeezes the reed in his hands and it begins to transform itself. Kyria flattens her eyes wide due to swelling. Through the passing of the reed, Nathaniel's hands are no longer a reed but a sword. The sword that plays on the sun. The man grins. Tell them what time to start. Kyria cannot look at the dark-haired man. 
Vaughn gasped and couldn't believe what had happened. Sayak? So this reed is not a magical thing? The girl waves her hair. Nathaniel grins at her and puts his sword forward. Kyria understands. This man with the piercing look is not a magician. She looks at Nathaniel, and after a few seconds says, Have you deceived me? In principle, what kind of idiot Varta was going to get caught in the first place, otherwise? All the same, Kyria seems to be unacceptable. The man says that he doesn't understand anything. Vin begins to look at his sword. Me? Kyria says, You are great at deceiving. The man doesn't react. Lita adds that she understood everything as soon as she swung her sword. Nathaniel understands that he won't be able to get out of this anymore. Vin grins. Oh, did they catch me? Vin looks directly at the handle of the sword and says, That's right, I'm master here. Ailey, people call me a sadist. The stench is just stupid. The man stretches out the sword of Kyria, so that the girl switches over and is safe. Vaughn was still shocked. I can't wait to get some. It was time for the Marquise's son to approach the edge of the arena. He looks directly at Kyria and Nathaniel. An evil spirit burns in the eyes of a man. You want to take revenge. To take revenge for your imaged honor. Young Vermont looks at his rivals and his own sword. His armor looks like the most reliable and the beauty behind his rival's armor. The man grins. He sings at his paramosa. Like this weakling who is so worthy of Kyria, we can overcome this valiant leader of the House of Vermont. Kyria narrows her gaze at this self-important idiot. The girl tightens her grip on Nathaniel's sword. I really want to hit the Marquis's son. The dark-haired raptum feeds ye. Do you want to overcome? Kyria becomes thoughtful. Of course, victory is a miracle. Those who succeed will once again win the best thing, glory and gold. There is one small but important nuance in this situation. If Nathaniel can do it, he won't harm the couple with the Marquis of Vermont. You will take revenge. Take revenge cruelly and mercilessly, Ale. On the other hand, Nathaniel's program will also not bring anything good. Kyria will have to hear ridicule. The best option is to start immediately. How to beat Nathaniel and not fight this idiot. She is unlikely to listen to Kyria. Before that, the duel is not your fault. More precisely, an initiative. Savermont first threw his mitten. That dark-haired man's talk about victory aroused a wonderful excitement in Kyria. The girl opens her eyes wide, trying to find the right words. Despite being skeptical about Nathaniel, Kyria doesn't want to embarrass him. You should be amazed at the son of the Marcus and the man who is following him, his armored man. Kyria says, overcome or lose, I don't have anything to spend. Father Kyria's office, the man who is working at the table sits dissatisfied. It looks like work isn't easy for you. Before speaking, he has a great cache of books. The man throws a hundred papers on the table. Those ice don't spread into your sides, and it's even better. Otherwise, the Count would simply tear them apart and then destroy them. The man takes the Arkush paper in his hands, written in new, the reason for your anger. The Empress sold the rights to the festival to Denhall. If Kyria would not have broken the bonds with the Crown Prince, the man could have taken away this land. The Count pours cognac from the village. Denhall, how much greed do you have? The man brings things to the wind and says to himself, I'm not going to spend my money in domestic trading. Ale is manipulating the royal homeland. This really overwhelms a person. You want to drink away your misfortune. Only a few people are going to make the first round as the rapto begins to grow. He looks with direct displeasure at the family photo on his desk. There are images of Kyria, himself and his son. The drops do not bring any bark. I want to be so confident. The Count respects his children as ordinary people. His hostile, prickly look lets you know about it. The stone on the screen is shining. More precisely, not on a screen, but on a magic phone. The man feeds himself who can call so early. Vin says dissatisfiedly, Ha! El still receives the call. Raptum, you're more polite there. The man presses on the purple stone and reveals himself as the Marquis of Vermont. The Count feeds whatever he wants. The man grins. It seemed to me that you would like to know how your beloved daughter is doing, or not, Count Buchan. Father Kiri folds his hands together. Whose person definitely needs someone, otherwise you can't get away with him. The Count said, I'm calm, even with you. The man looks directly at the family photo. It's a cool fact, but Kyria is new. The only people are dissatisfied. The Marquis said, That's great, my friends. She's healthy. Hey, he continues, I should have told you that it's not the only one that will go up in price. If only I had prepared better. Count of shocks. Not alone? What are you thinking about? Chizya Palace. The girl clutches the great emerald from her hand on the green cloth, then I put it on the orange pillow. I bet the Duchess of Denhall won't come. The room is quite noisy. 
Young aristocrats are sitting on the sofas, discussing things with each other. It's like a tea bath here. The Russian girl, Liana Torvald, said, Miss Ciudad, it's amazing, you've opened another salon. The dark-haired lady, why would she sit there and say, It's been a shame. This curly-haired sweet girl is Rachel Hill. Vaughn grins. Chula, Miss Casu has been asked to go to the Duchess of Denhall's salon. Now she's christened a prince. The lady in the eyepieces, Leonora Dundrinch, says, The Duchess of Denhall has a good relationship with the princess. Perhaps Miss Cassiu will widen her senses to take away her trimming. The greater empire of this empire is divided into two factions, Persia Korolevska. Its leader is Princess Julia Oriwin Bridge, daughter of the 18th Queen. Rachel Hill waves her hand. Men Skoda, Miss Ciudad. Seemingly tight, I thought you wouldn't fit in. I was actually thinking of enlisting the support of the Duke. The other faction is aristocratic. She is cared for by Maria Ciudad, a dark-haired girl, a friend of Kiria. Maria says that these princesses will take an oath to the Empire. And it's not a super thing. Leonora screams at Maria, Ms. Ciudad. Ms. Hill adds, As you said, we are not just aristocrats. We are the descendants of the founders. The roads of cloth begin to rustle. The aristocrats cannot understand how Mrs. Denhall could do such a thing. How could you ask for Rubinia? Why are they trying to be friends with her? Sia Rosmova will soon point out that Budinka Bukhan has a lot of allies. There are a lot of aristocrats on this side. The young ladies will sip on the Duke's mind and business. And from Rubini they feel hostility. She sounded too loudly for her, who had arrived unknown. Alas, Princess Julia never bothered with politics. She simply sits between the two factions and takes the position of those who are more interested in the moment. Maria Ciudad does not understand such behavior. Why is the Duke of Denhall so angry? All girls need to know about this, and it's not just aristocrats. Please, please, politicians. Miss Thorwald expresses her apology to the Count. In my opinion, the Duke of Denhall recently bought the rights to develop the Pevdenojadnogo region. Maria opens her eyes wide. It is possible that there is a reason for this strange behavior. Perhaps he is going to victorious Mr. Cassiu. The girls continue to say, Day sunset? Well, these lands are not native. There were rumors that the Imperial homeland wanted to develop them. Miss Hill said, Maybe the stinks were just going to put the whole job on the shoulders of the Duke of Denhall. Maria says, That stinks of greed. Miss Torvald adds with a regretful voice, Our homeland planned to expand the vineyards at the end of the day, but they should have thought for a long time. Maria is hooting at the girl. She immediately locks and directs her gaze to the aristocrat, giving evidence of allegiance. The dark-haired man said that he would choke on Torvald's wines. Liana says, What an honor, God! I'll definitely give you a few dances. Maria smiles pleasantly and says sadly, I'll check. Triberin is a centralized power. It is not the kind of land that can be called mighty. Trust in the aristocracy rests mainly on legends and religion. They live in the economy. Anyway, the empire is still being wiped away for a long time, inspired by myths. And why can't a firebrand tear the aristocrats to pieces? Maria frowns and thinks to say, Perhaps the imperial homeland, with the help of Rubina Kessia, wants to take away more allies. Leonora adjusts the eyepieces and says thoughtfully, Hmm, before speaking, I thought that the princess herself was encouraging the prince and Miss Kezia. Miss Hill, like everyone else in the room, is shocked. God, do you think this is true? Maria is unable to formulate words due to shock. It looks like the princess has finished her move.